Hi, good evening, everyone. I would like to call this July Council meeting to order. Um, and we will begin with some reports for starting with me. Um, I hope that everybody had a very happy Canada Day, uh, St. Jean Baptiste. It was uh, certainly a different time, but I want to just congratulate our community events team that worked really hard to engage our citizens um, all the same. Uh, in this uh, era of, of COVID and how we're, we're, we're still trying to continue with uh, culture and community events with, um, with our residents. And I can certainly, I think I speak on behalf of council, one of the things that we missed the most was certainly our citizenship ceremony that we've hosted for the past couple of years at Victoria Hall. And we look forward as soon as we can, that will, I hope, hopefully be one of the very first events that we do is um, welcoming new Canadians. So um, a couple things to update on. As you may or may not have heard, the City of Montreal has just announced that they um, are moving towards making masks mandatory in all closed public spaces. So this is an issue that we, we very much support um, and have been supporting all along, but have always said that it made sense for this to be an island-wide issue and not for it just to be us as we are completely surrounded by, we are one of the independent cities that is totally surrounded by Montreal. So this is very welcome news. We will work with the merchants um, and our retailers uh, to, make this, to make this happen. And we also have um, tons of reusable masks. If you go to our website, you can easily access a, access a form for how you can get one of those reusable masks. We will get it to you if you cannot come in and pick it up. Um, but we encourage you every time, and this is not to say that it is when you are always out in public, if you are, but it is when you are in a closed space. So when you go shopping, our expectation from you and from the merchants in Westmount is that you wear a mask. Um, we've seen spikes recently in different areas. And this is what we are really, really trying to avoid. So um, it is, I think, very welcome news and many will criticize um, saying that it was too late. But I think what's really important is that it, it's, it's happening now and let's just work to make sure that it, it, uh, it, it works with our, with our retailers as well. So um, I'm sure that Councillor Gallery will also have lots of updates um, on day camp and the pool and the library and how things are working there. But I just want to congratulate the team over at Sports and Rec who have done an incredible job and a, a difficult job working with the administration of running day, a day camp under these circumstances has been an incredible challenge and they've risen to it. And I've talked to um, a couple of kids that it went last week. And it was, I think, such a welcome addition to their summer. Um, so I just, I wanna really congratulate them for working hard to get that off the ground because many cities opted out of having a day camp and as well as the pool. And we've heard, um, we've heard residents uh, and their feedback on the pool. And I just, I, I wanna reiterate that we are operating under um, very different numbers than we than we normally can with the pool. Our, our pool normally has a capacity of 350 people, and we now have a capacity of 75 people. So, just that alone, and the fact that you know many kids, many families are not elsewhere; that they're here; that the demand on the pool is that much greater. So, we did make some adjustments to the schedule, and we'll probably have to make more. And so, I encourage you to get your information from the city website, the city uh, social media platforms. Um, if there are some changes, they will be there and they will be accurate as to, as to what those changes are. So um, I encourage you to use the online registration system for the pool. And I think it's, um, and I just, I wanna thank the lifeguards as well. When many could have opted, when many students have opted and we've seen it across the country, we know there is, a shortage everywhere. When many have opted not to work, uh, that team of lifeguards is working and they are out there and I want to congratulate them and thank them. And if you have an issue with how the pool is being run or the schedule, I would urge you not to scream at them, that uh, you can communicate with us, but they are putting into place what, uh, what the city has, has asked them to do. So I just, uh, I want to a huge thing. I, I really want to emphasize how much I want to thank the team at Sports and Rec for what they have, have done over the past couple of weeks. Um, 
And then I am going to turn it over to uh, Councillor Bostock, who's going to give an update on this. But it is uh, a very tragic situation in that we had the death of a cyclist in the city a couple of weeks ago. Um, and at the corner of on Forden near Montrose. And she will give you more details about that. But we have, uh, I have been able to express my condolences to the family. Um, and he was a PhD student at McGill. So, and as well to his, uh, his PhD supervisor. And some of the, the residents in the area have written to me and you have our commitment that we are going to work very hard with the police um, and with public security and with um, Dan Lambert and his team uh, from the Westmount uh, Cycling Association to do everything that we can to make the necessary changes in that neighborhood, but also to look at this holistically across uh, across our city of how we have more people on bikes right now. And that is that is great news, but we really need to make sure that we have all the measures in place that we can keep them as safe as possible. So on that note, um, I hand it over to, uh, I will hand it over to Councillor Bostock. On uh, June 24th, Maximilian K1 Elvis Scanny, a 29 year old student from Germany, died following a tragic incident when his bike collided with a car on Forden Avenue. On behalf of the mayor and council, I would like to extend our heartfelt sympathies to Maximilian's family and loved ones and to the driver of the vehicle who has also been deeply affected by this tragedy. A tragedy like this one affects the entire community and serves as a reminder of how important it is to remain vigilant and attentive when cycling or driving. A small candlelight vigil was held in Westmount Park on July 3rd with his family and friends and members of the cycling community. Because of COVID-19, there are more cyclists and pedestrians um, out on Westmount roads. Please be careful, abide by traffic and speed regulations and take extra safety precautions when necessary. Uh, once again, our deepest sympathies go out to the family involved. Um, I do have an update on parks and dogs and such that I would. Thank you. Out. Go ahead and thank you for um, <clears throat> those words. Um, to the park patrollers have been helping out in parks, and there's definitely been some more visibility in the in in general. And I think people are are seeing our our patrols increased. Uh, again, we're reminding any visitors, residents or non-residents to please click, pick up uh, after themselves in the park. Please take out what you take in so that we can all have a clean and beautiful park space. Uh, and um, a, a different something that we've never done before well, on June 18th, our public security permit clerk uh, set up shop at the Summit Woods and reminded dog owners to have their dog licenses update updated. Um, we also took the opportunity to just distribute uh, reusable masks. Uh, Summit Woods, a little reminder that off-leash times are from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. to midnight, uh, and that when you are in the dog runs, humans need to stay six feet apart. Um, our parking and dog license clerk will have a booth set up for residents next to the library in Westmount Park uh, tomorrow, July 7th and July 9th, weather permitting from 9 to 3. Uh, you can come by with your vaccination certificate or your documents required to obtain or renew your parking permit uh, and your dog, oh, sorry, yes, and your dog license. Uh, payments can be made by check, cash, or credit, and uh, reusable masks will also be available to Westmount residents. Um, interesting to note that we distributed uh, over a thousand masks uh, during the hazardous waste collection, which I think is great. Um, and we have received uh, over 400 requests from residents via our website so far. So that's great news. Um, and this evening I will be moving item 12 uh, for some money to be spent in Devon Park um, and um, for the restoration of the wall and stairs at Devon Park. As you know, Devon Park is accessible to pedestrians through its two passageways and steps and the eastern steps associated walls are significantly deteriorated and have been closed to the public for quite some time in order to allow public access uh, until larger restoration projects can happen. We have pursued a temporary uh, repair project that aims to reopening the steps um, for public access and um, that work should be completed by the 
uh, month of August. And that's all I have to say today. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cutler. Uh, I don't think you have any updates <laughs> at the point. Well, uh, well, I'll just mention quickly that I'll be moving an item uh, later. Uh, that's going to be uh, the nomination of Assistant Director of Public Works. So I'm really excited about that. Great, good job. Um, Councillor Shami, any updates on your part? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Very quickly, just two shout outs. I want to uh, firstly support uh, your comment about wearing masks. I think we, re we have to reiterate and uh, remind all the residents and everybody how important uh, this uh, this is uh, in the in the uh, following the public uh, santé publique's rules, but also we need to tell uh, everybody you know. So family, friends, colleagues, spread the word. The second item, uh, Madam Mayor and fellow councillors and ladies and gentlemen, I uh, was approached by a resident who doesn't have YouTube and asked me to do a shout out to two longstanding Green Avenue. Uh, uh, legacies. And uh, we all know Shea Nick is celebrating 100 years, the longest serving restaurant in the, in Montreal, and how proud we are uh, for Shea Nick. As well, we've all heard the news that uh, Chaucer Tony Shoes, since 1937, serving West Mounters and Montrealers more than 83 years, um, is uh, they're retiring. Uh, and this resident asked, I just say, uh, that we need to that we, that we need to say thank you to these two wonderful legacies on Green Avenue. It's a part of our fabric of our soul of who we are. And uh, this resident just asked that I say uh, some kind things, and I promised I would. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Shami, and uh, I echo um, and have had a, had a chance to. Congratulate Rob Caller directly on his hundred years, um, and as well, it's hard to imagine Green Avenue without uh, without Tonys. But I think all of Council joins me in wishing them very well and their very much deserved and earned retirement. Um, Councillor Peart, do you have any updates tonight? No. No, okay. Uh, Councillor Breschke. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, a few updates. Uh, first on a construction project that's on the MDG side in District 5. Uh, so it is the reconstruction of Demesenev's water main. So you may have noticed that work started today and the street is blocked between Claremont and Vendome Metro, uh, more or less. And uh, the work is starting today. It's going to go on until August 14. The cycling path is still accessible and the bus routes may have changed. So if you're planning to go to the metro or coming back and looking for a bus schedule, you can find that information at the STM info STM website. Um, so the work schedule is posted on the City of Montreal site. So it's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m could be depending on the work schedule um, some weekends, but it's not foreseen. Um, and uh, so that's going on. So you can expect a little bit of, uh, obviously a road closure uh, for vehicles, uh, cars uh, heading west, I believe. And, um, and on other news um, items, uh, there was a hazardous waste collection. So I have a bit of, good data to share with you. Uh, we have had 536 cars come by um, to unload their vehicles of hazardous home waste and uh, paints and whatnot. Uh, and this is almost double of the number of vehicles that we've had in past years. So it's the highest since a peak that we had in 2016, 318 cars. So thank you very much for participating and for uh, separating your hazardous home waste and participating in this collection. The next one is going to be in the fall. So again, again we encourage you to keep store your uh, items for that hazardous waste collection in your homes until the fall. Um, and speaking of waste, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Susan Grundy and Ross Brown of Healthy City Project, uh, who have published a study on composting participation in Westmount residential uh, streets uh, that was published in the Westmount Independent. Uh, they did this 
with the collaboration of the city of Westmount. And I just wanted to thank them for those figures. It is indeed uh, something we need to increase is the composting rate. And uh, Premier Legault announced, uh, the Quebec government announced an important investment in composting of 1.2 billion. And uh, at the same time, increasing the rates uh, for waste disposal at the uh, at landfill. Um, so their target is to have everyone composting by 2025. And City of Westmont will certainly align and uh, we will be working hopefully with the partnership or with some support from the Health City Project as well, continuing with this dossier. So if you're not composting, the bins are available. You can contact Public Works. I believe it's 5311-989-5311 and you'll get a bin and you can start. I really do encourage this. Um, and finally, uh, one last announcement. Uh, we will be recruiting uh, participants to the Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, you'll be seeing uh, an ad uh, in the Westmount Independent and our social media about it. So we encourage residents who, uh, especially residents who have a mobility or uh, a handicap in the city who wish to uh, represent um, residents on this dossier, uh, to submit their applications. It's not going to be a long mandate. It's very, actually a very clear, precise mandate that's gonna last less than a year. Uh, so if you know anyone, or if uh, you know a parent of a child um, with a handicap who would be interested in joining this committee, um, please keep a lookout on those ads and send your application. And that's about it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Brushke, uh, Councillor Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, bonsoir tout le monde. I have a few updates tonight. Uh, I'd like to start with the swimming pool. As you know, it opened two weeks ago today, and uh, we had some uh, quite a bit of initial resident feedback. And as such, uh, last week we have implemented a few changes in the pool schedule and with the reservation system. So we've shrunk the time of some of the swimming blocks, which actually has allowed us up to 250 more swimmers a day. So we're pleased with that and uh, hope we're gonna keep an eye on it and uh, tweak it if necessary, if we hear more feedback, uh, positive or negative, but um, we welcome to hear back from you. Uh, but don't forget, we are still in a pandemic and we have to do things very carefully and, um, but, but it's not perfect, but we're getting there. Um, with, with regard to the reservation system, it used to be at six in the morning. It has now switched to noon. Um, again, that has been a, a big change, a positive change for people. Everyone can access the time um, equally and, and uh, at an accessible point of the day. Um, with regard to day camp, the second session started today. It's hard to believe. Camp's going extremely well and um, we're really pleased with what's going on in the parks and in Victoria Hall and feedback is great there as well. Tennis lessons are running smoothly and the last bit of exciting news is the arena will be reopening a week from today on July 13th. It will be a soft opening, which means we will be starting with adult hockey in the evenings for rentals. Um, a week after that, we'll be starting with the youth hockey and eventually, in a very controlled environment, we'll be looking at how to manage general and free hockey, general skating and uh, general hockey. So stay tuned. Again, always check our websites. We are constantly thriving, uh, thriving to improve and deliver the best possible product for all of you. Um, at the library, that team has been very busy as well. We started our curbside service for pickup um, July 8th. It's hard to believe it's been almost a month. We've had over 6,000 reservations placed. Uh, we've had over almost 5,000 items loaned, 6,000 items returned, and the number of patrons that we've served so far is over 1,200. So that team has been working really hard and uh, we're looking very, very gradually at a, some version of a reopening of the library, but it will be very pushed out later in the summer, um, but please stay tuned. Lastly, in Westmount Park, we have a new story walk and it is called The Thing Lou Couldn't Do 
And uh, please go see it, walk through our beautiful parks. And uh, again, as the mayor mentioned, I'd like to thank both teams at the library and the sports and rec department for all their hard work, for keeping us safe, for putting our programs in place. And please be kind with them. Please be patient with them. Uh, they're doing their best. We're still in a pandemic and uh, um, I'm very proud of, of, to work with them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallery. Councillor Lullum. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Smith. So first wanted to say that uh, we've uh, added picnic tables on Friday to our um, pedestrian strip on Green Avenue. For those of you who haven't gone to see it, uh, we've stencil painted part of the street and put down some uh, artificial turf on other parts. We have tables and chairs and picnic tables. And I'm pleased to say that uh, uh, Nix is the first um, uh, restaurant in Westmount to have a terrace on the street. Uh, later, I will be passing two um, amendments to our bylaws uh, for this purpose that we are allowing terraces on streets to add extra space um, for the restaurants um, who don't have the sidewalk space in front of their stores, uh, in front of the restaurants to accommodate more customers uh, due to the COVID. They have to limit their amount of, of customers. Having a terrace helps. So Nix is the first uh, on the street terrace uh, on Green Avenue, fittingly being the oldest restaurant and all. Um, so that is on green. And we'll be adding a pergola, two pergolas um, to offer shade on a section of that. Uh, those will be in a couple of weeks. And we are working on creating six placettes. These are small um, wooden structures that um, uh, accommodate people for sitting and also have pergolas for shade. Uh, we're not sure where they'll be placed. There'll be six of them between Victoria and Claremont, three on the north side, three on the south side. I don't know if they'll be individual or grouped together. Um, the uh, Our urban planning department will be working with the Merchants Association on establishing where they should go. So that's very exciting. We'll offer places for people to sit. Um, if they have to go line up and they're waiting for somebody, we'll offer also a place for people to eat, take out food, et cetera, and add some animation to the street. We're trying very hard to animate both Green and um, Victoria Village to um, you know, bring customers back. Today, I spoke to many merchants in the Victoria Village area, and they were saying that uh, customers are coming back and business was going better. So that's good news. And on the last note, um, you'll see that our the company we hired uh, last month are now felling trees um, around the city. So I get a lot of people contacting me about dead trees. As once the trees have their leaves, it becomes quite apparent what tree didn't make it. Um, and there's great concern for safety and the like, but the crew is out there felling the trees and there'll be another tree planting program in the fall. Um, once they fell the trees, they're followed by the company that removes the stumps. And that's my report, Mayor Smith. Thank you. Uh, and again, just what everyone else had said about Green Avenue, uh, it looks great. It's so fun to see the street animated like that. And I look forward to uh, seeing uh, Sherbrooke Street and how we can um, make some improvements there. So thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Kez, do you have an update? No? Okay, so now we move into the first question period of the night. Um, Maitre Brownstein, I, I think there are some questions that have been sent in. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So I will uh, read the questions that we've received today through our online system. Uh, questions can always be submitted on the day of the meeting via our online form open uh, for, for submissions. So the first question is from David Searle. The question is as follows. First, thank you for your hard work helping the city to adapt to the COVID crisis. There is no ideal solution to what is going on, and I'm confident that you are all doing your best. Second, I would like to bring the council's attention to a 2018 in-depth report by the David Suzuki Foundation on la fin du gazon, où et comment complexifier les espaces verts du Grand Montréal pour s'adapter aux changements globaux. Uh, it outlines how we can help create Health, the, he includes a hyperlink to this, uh, to this uh, report. Um, it outlines how we can help 
create healthy green spaces that retain more water, host greater biodiversity, and limit the impact of global warming. How? Notably by limiting the cutting of grass in strategic locations, sometimes to only once a year. What actions will city council take to do its part and improve the livability of the city regarding lawn mowing? Is it willing to follow the example of cities around the world, such as Melbourne, Australia, Rotherham, UK, Los Angeles, and of course, the city of Montreal, and limit the mowing of lawn on less frequented city lands, such as the median on Dorchester, the green facing city hall, et cetera. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for the question. I see Councillor Lillam has a hand up and I'm sure Councillor Bresky may have some input on this. Uh, all very, uh, all very good suggestions, ones that uh, we, we certainly get a lot of feedback on, uh, on the state of our green spaces. And we've seen, uh, we've had two significant heat waves already this year and about to start a third, which has its impact on uh, on all of our green spaces. So um, I, I, I'm sure that there is, uh, there is much more that we can and should do on this issue in terms of um, how we deal with, you know, I guess you're asking about grass specifically. Um, so I would have to go back to Public Works and talk to them, but Councillor Lemmum, do you have an update on this? And then we can get back to you, Mr. Searle, with uh, yeah, uh, some recommendations. The area where I think, you know, the, as a good start is Westmount Park. We had started the consultations on Westmount Park. We looked at creating a pond um, that would then absorb all of the runoff of the water. Um, and again, included in that would be natural grasslands and the like. There was very much a big push towards naturalization. Um, shortly, we'll be moving back, hopefully, um, to the next phases of the consultation and the reports. And, uh, the major goals uh, in in Westmount Park was to take away concrete to um, become uh, greener and to uh, you know not have water go into the sewage system etc and to have a natural pond system so I think those are all towards the goals that are in that Suzuki uh, report and definitely you know not having grass that you mow is a big part of Thank you, Councillor Breschke. Do you wanna add any commentary to that? Yes, uh, thank you very much for pointing attention to the report. Um, indeed, I mean, we are actually this evening passing a motion uh, with regards to our water usage and the cut par from the aglo on water usage. And so uh, it is known that there are ground covers that require less watering, for instance. Uh, so we will definitely be looking at that as well as um, there are a lot of cities that have name themselves a beef friendly city or monarch friendly city. And a lot of these measures sort of come into play to um, have a soil uh, that is rich in biodiversity and flowering ground cover. Uh, so definitely um, thank you for bringing attention to the report. This is definitely something that will be studied and uh, looked at not only in parks, but also in um, our public, other public spaces and our bylaws. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Major Bernstein, next Thank question, you. if there is one. Our next question is from Richard Locke. The question is as follows. I am glad to see slash hear the street lines are being repainted. We will now have visible lines for a few months. I know that the province decrees that we use water soluble paints for environmental reasons. But my question is, one, when did this law come into effect? And two, what do other provinces and other countries do about this problem? And please do not tell me that Quebec has a unique climate. Thank you for your attention. I hope I am not becoming repetitive. Uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Locke. I know that you have asked this before. Um, and just in terms of line painting that had been slightly delayed, but you'll see the trucks out uh, Hopefully you don't hear them too much, but they will be, they are, they have begun the painting at night um, and will be over the next couple of weeks. Uh, this uh, change has been in place or this law has been in place, in place with the province since 2010 um, for environmental reasons. The MTQ changed the paint from an oil based, based to a water-based one. Um, and eliminated any paint with any lead content. 
Um, I can't tell you what the other provinces do. Um, and I know that uh, in the United States, I think they're, they still use uh, lead and acrylic paint, but we are a city in the province of Quebec that has this legislation in place. So we ha obviously have to adhere to it. And um, obviously our winters and our salt have an effect on the paint. Uh, so I would encourage you to write to your um, provincial representatives as well um, on this issue. So thank you, Mr. Locke. Next, does anyone else want to comment on this? Uh, Councillor Breschke? Yes, I can uh, add that uh, the MTQ also did a, a study on the uh, emissions of the various paints. And so we're talking about a fourfold increase in solvent emissions. So for, uh, this is under the clear air regulation in Quebec. Uh, so for emissions, that's important. And I guess everything boils down to, um, to simply, you know, keeping the environment clean and at the same time having a very good um, overarching vision zero strategy and line painting is one, marking is one, but there's many aspects to keeping our roads safe. Uh, so um, that's, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question. Our next question is from Marie-Laure Sauvageau. And the question is as follows. To the attention of the regular municipal council sitting on July 6, 2020, we have been informed by our new neighbors who acquired the good house of item 13 of the regular municipal council agenda taking place this evening. Notice a motion bylaw 1552 to recognize the good house as a heritage immovable. We are interested, we are an interested party in that our property sitting at 19 Springfield Avenue is landlocked at the rear yard limits and it's only direct access for machinery slash equipment related to landscaping works is through the good house's backyard. Since the proposed bylaw has not been tabled with the agenda, we have not been able to understand its potential implications for us. Our property sitting at 19 Springfield Avenue with regards to works in our rear yard or access there too. More precisely, we would like to understand how we can complete the works that we've been planning and for which we intend to file for a permit at the next council. The works will include digging a pool, installing a spa, moving machinery to the rooftop, replacing the fence and other hard and soft landscaping. Furthermore, there is a sick tree at the division line of our respective properties, which we would like the city to assess in order to complete all works at once to reduce the impacts on the said properties, the nature and our neighbors. We would also ask the city and its representatives to keep us informed and include us in any future communications relating to anything pertaining to the good house or any other property or topic that may impact us or our property, 19 Springfield Avenue, with regards to works in our rear yard or access there too. We thank you in advance for your answers and future collaboration. Best regards. Uh, thank you for your question. And you are, uh, the resident is correct. There is a notice of motion tonight um, on the agenda to recognize the Good House as a heritage immovable. But uh, I think that you would probably, uh, this resident would be best be served by speaking directly with urban planning um, to discuss the, the different aspects of, um, of what their permit application will be. And certainly um, we, will, we will communicate uh, any changes publicly. But uh, Councillor Lullum or Councillor Peart, did you have anything you wanted to mention on this? I, I no? think the best thing is, as you suggested, that uh, she discuss it with the urban planning department. Yeah. And they will uh, they will be able to guide her through that that permit process. All right, thank you. Uh, next question. Our next question is from Dennis Biro. Question is as follows: On June fifteenth, the public consultation office released its summary report on systemic racism and discrimination in Montreal. That same day, our council expressed its full support, noting that the first and form first and most important recommendation is to acknowledge the problem. Which of these recommendations, if any, can Westmount integrate into its policies to better the lives of residents in our community and those within marginalized groups in neighboring ones? Uh, thank you for the question. And it uh, is an important one. And um, we are going to have an in-depth discussion with J. 
general committee on this. Uh, I know that council has, uh, is referring to the summary report. There's also a, a full report on uh, systemic racism and discrimination in Montreal. And it's obviously a very uh, critical, important uh, issue that we all address. And we expect to, our, our expectation and hope is to be very much involved with the city of Montreal uh, in any of those discussions. So we will um, continue to discuss as a council and we will come back um, with our recommendations and uh, how we, we think it uh, can best serve residents. Does anyone else have any comments on this? Uh, no. Okay. So next question. Our next question is from Dan Lambert. Uh, and the question is as follows. Uh, it's entitled Make Westmount Streets Safer for Cyclists. And Dan Lambert is writing uh, in his capacity uh, in his involvement with, uh, with the Association of Pedestrians and Cyclists of Westmount. Now, uh, here's his question. We were greatly saddened by the tragic death of a 29 year old cyclist following a collision with a driver on Ford and Crescent on June 16. The collision highlighted safety problems on Ford and Crescent, Borden and Montrose, which have concerned residents for some time. Our association has submitted a list of suggested changes which would reduce the chance of collisions along Ford and Crescent and Forden. We hope the city will promptly implement the key recommendations. But more importantly, this fatal collision has reminded us the vulnerability and fragility of pedestrians and cyclists when interacting with motor vehicles, which are big, heavy, frequently moving fast and unforgiving. This underscores the importance of providing safe access for cyclists along Westmount's busy streets, where the probability of collisions is much higher. Since the start of the COVID crisis, our association has been concerned about the safety of the increasing number of inexperienced youth and adults who have started cycling for exercise, or to travel from A to B without taking public transportation. As more people return to their normal activities, the number of new and inexperienced, inexperienced cyclists will grow. While education and enforcement of the Highway Safety Code is important, the most effective way to limit collisions between vulnerable road users and drivers is to modify the road design to limit the probability of collisions, consistent with the Vision Zero program. Uh, question. We ask for a commitment from Council to provide, by the end of this year, safe access for cyclists along two streets with a high prob probability of collisions due to the high number of cyclists and drivers. Specifically, we ask that the city add protected bike paths on Sherbrooke Street, complete the missing gap in the Lansdowne bike path between Sherbrooke and De Maisonneuve, the Lansdowne danger zone, this is in brackets. These are not new requests, but the fatal collision combined with the increased number of vulnerable cyclists underscores their urgency. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, it's, um, we had discussed, uh, I've been discussing with Mr. Lambert over the past uh, few weeks, this tragic accident that happened. Um, and I wanna thank his association for the recommendations that they made uh, for the area around Forden and Montrose, um, which the city is working on how to implement. There were some, some easy ones that were able to be done quickly. And then our traffic engineer with the SPVM will work on longer term solutions. And um, in terms of the bike paths, uh, while we have added some, we have not added enough. And I fully recognize that. Um, and I know the ideal is to have um, that Mr. Lambert and his colleagues have certainly asked for a protected bike path on Sherbrooke Street. And as we see an increase in cyclists during COVID, uh, it becomes just more apparent the need for a protected, uh, protected bike path. So we will continue to discuss this at Council um, with the hopes of adding, of adding more to the city's uh, current bike path infrastructure. And certainly um, you will see some changes along the Lansdowne, uh, the Lansdowne bike corridor over the, uh, over the coming days. So I don't know if anyone else has anything else they wanna to add to that on um, anyone from the TAC or no? Just, just that it's, a, it's something that we, we 
discuss at every meeting and looking at ways to increase uh, safety for everybody, uh, pedestrians and for cyclists. And so that this, you know, the recommendations were very helpful and, and certainly something that we will be looking into. Um, and, you know, we're, we're working on it uh, every two weeks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Breschke, I think, is raising her hand. I was just going to uh, say to the population, share the road. Uh, you know, we have some signage out there already on some of the streets. Uh, pedestrian cyclists, uh, drivers, uh, especially during this time, a lot of people are out. And um, if you're in a, in a rush, uh, change your appointment. Um, it is one accident. It's a whole community's behavior that can change the uh, the future of one individual, you know, or or the life of of, uh, of our residents, you know. So collectively, um, I think we all need to uh, be very careful on the road, and you know, coach our kids to learn you know, how to respect the signage and uh, not no speeding, obviously. So uh, please, thank you. Thank you. So next, we have, next question. Uh, our if last question. Uh, yeah, our last question is from Roger Joshim. Uh, two part question on one subject. If conversations that citizens have had with different Westmount councillors are entirely true and the Labo Sport presentation on the possibility of inserting an artificial playing field has been made to Westmount City Council, when will it be made public? And will Westmount City Council make a public declaration as to whether or not they have definitely dropped any consideration of putting an artificial turf surface in any Westmount park? Uh, Mr. Yoakum has asked this question of myself and of, of the administration uh, a few times uh, or several times lately. And the response has been that and continues to be that we have asked Labo Spore to, to give us the latest and most up-to-date science that is available on different and the environmental impact of different turfs because they are not all one and the same anymore. And we think that it is only prudent to have an understanding about what is on the market. Uh, he has referred to some data in the past. I think that, that he uh, refers to data from 2005. And I think that our residents would actually prefer to have something much more up to date. So that is what they have been tasked with that has not been presented to council at this point. Um, so we await, we await that, but that does not mean, uh, and, and a key component of that is that we are looking for what the environmental impact of, uh, of various types of turf is. So that is, um, that is an answer that had been shared with him before, but I, I reiterate that. Uh, does anyone else want to comment on that? No, and so there has, uh, and I think he's also asking in a second part for a declaration that no turf will ever be put in in any park in Westmount. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to predict the future. I can tell you right now that it is not, uh, that it is not something that we have in our PTI budget or, or in our, in our projects going forward, but we know that we have a challenge uh, with the maintenance of our fields and the use of our parks. And if COVID has taught us anything, it's how um, important our parks are to our residents. So um, both from a playing fields perspective and uh, from residents using it, but there are, we do not have any plans right now for um, a turf field, but we await, uh, we will get the report eventually. And he, he is, uh, been shared the link and others will as well of how they can access those documents. Any further, anyone else want to comment on this? No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, now we move into the adoption of the agenda. That's it for questions, Major Brownstein? 
Yes, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the adoption of the agenda, Councillor Cutler. Madame la mairesse, je propose que l'ordre du jour de la séance ordinaire du Conseil du 6 juillet 2020 soit adopté. Thank you. Puis, est-ce que je peux avoir un appuyeur, s'il vous plaît? Councillor Bostock, all in favor? Carried. Uh, confirmation of minutes. Again, Councillor Cutler. Mayor, I move that the minutes of the regular council sitting held on June 15th, 2020, and the special council meeting. Uh, sitting held on June 22nd, 2020, be approved. Uh, thank you. And a seconder again, uh, Councillor Breschke. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Uh, reports to Council. Uh, the following documents are tabled. And Major Bramstein, I need to read all of the all of the documents, I guess, or the titles at least. Um, you could read the, uh, the, just the titles or just the bylaw numbers for reference. Okay. No, uh, bylaw RCG 20-022 entitled Reglement relatif à l'établissement de la dénomination du parc à caractère régional, le parc de l'éco-territoire de la falaise of the city of Montreal in resolution CG 20-0333 adopting said bylaw and bylaw RCG 20-0 uh, 20-023 entitled Reglement fixant le taux au mètre cube de l'eau en fonction des coûts réels relatifs à l'alimentation en eau potable au fin de la cote par tarifaire de l'alimentation en eau potable. Um, of the City of Montreal on Resolution CG 20-0334 adopting said bylaw. And then bylaw RCG 20-024 entitled Reglement établissement de la Programme d'aide visant à la soutenir la reprise des activités commerce dans le cadre de campagne socio-financement of the City of Montreal and Resolution CG 20-0335, adopting said bylaw. Um, 6.2, Councillor Cutler. Madame um, la Maresse, le process verbal de la rencontre du comité plénier du conseil du 1er juin 2020 est déposé et est disponible sur le site the site web de la ville. Merci beaucoup. 6.3, Councillor Kez. No reports are tabled. Merci. 6.4, Councillor Bostock. I move that the minutes of the Transportation Advisory Committee meetings held on May 26th, June 2nd, and June 16th, 2020 are tabled and are available on the city's website. Thank you. Uh, Six point. Five, Councillor Shami uh, is frozen, so I will table it for him. The manpower report for the month of May 2020 is tabled. This point, this Councillor Kez. The list of payments for the month of May 2020 is tabled. Uh, this point set, Councillor Shami, uh, list of approvals in, ver in virtue of bylaw 1507. You are on mute, so I will, you have unmuted. Okay, so I will read that one. In accordance with bylaw 1507 of the delegation of powers to certain employees of the city of Westmount, the list of authorization of expenditures for the month of, 20, of May 2020 is tabled. Uh, item number seven, Councillor Cutler. Uh, nomination Assistant Director, Public Works Department. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that Mr. Pedro Martinez be appointed to the position of Assistant Director of Public Works Department Grade 6 for a period of three years from July 6, 2020 to June 30th, 2023 in accordance with the salary recommendation of the Director of Human Resources Department stipulated in the decision-making file number 2020-1046 and according to the terms provided for in his employment contract. Uh, thank you very much. And a seconder that I have on this would be uh, Councillor Breschke. Um, you had mentioned this before, Councillor Cutler, this is very um, welcome news. And uh, he has been on with the city, um, I guess he was hired before winter, I suppose, but he worked very uh, diligently with the team this winter to implement our um, 
our uh, snow clearing operations. So I don't know if you have anything else you want to add on this, but this is welcome news to the team of Public Works. No, it, it, it is. Yeah, and they've been working incredibly hard. Um, the tasks at Public Works have obviously intensified during COVID. So this maintenance in parks and on our streets um, and the rest of it have been more challenging in this time. So I want to um, wish him the very best of luck in uh, continuing to help that team serve the residents in Westman. Okay, counts, uh, so all in favor. Uh, carried unanimously. Typically, this is when uh, we would all shake his hand and congratulate him in public. Uh, we're not able to do that, but we all uh, wish him the very best of luck. Uh, item number eight, Councillor Gallery, Gallery, approval of the 2020 grants for local nonprofit community organizations. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the remainder of the grants offered by the City of Westmount for the year 2020, totaling $70,500 be approved as follows. Atwater Library, a grant of $37,500 to help finance its operating costs. Sancha Green, a grant of $7,000 to help finance its operating costs. Visual Arts Centre, a grant of $6,500 for services provided to the city. The Westmount Historical Association, a grant of $6,000 to help finance its operating costs. Westmount YMCA, a grant of 13,500 for programs provided to the city and the community at large. That this expenditure be allocated in accordance with the financial information included in this decision-making file number 2020-1040. Thank you, a seconder on this, uh, Councillor Bostock. Do you have any further comments on this, Councillor Gallery? Uh, well, we're honoring the payment of the grants that we allocated the funds in March, and uh, we are we paused on the payments as COVID outbreak started in March. And uh, these are very important institutions in our community, and uh, it's vital that they get the funds to keep operating, even though times have been tough. Uh, yes. So uh, and. We wish them, we know that this has been incredibly difficult on, uh, on many of these organizations. So in that, uh, with that in mind, uh, do we have, uh, we had a seconder, which was Councillor Bostock, all in favor? Carried. Um, thank you. Numero 9, système de radiocommunication vocal seram avenant numero 2, Councillor Bostock. I move that the director general be authorized to sign for and in the name of the city, uh, the attached document of Mont numéro 2 Entente Intermunicipale concernant l'acquisition, installation et la maintenance d'un système de radiocommunication vocale à la ville de Montréal. Thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Peart, any further comments on that? No, we, we just need to update our, our equipment. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Um, item number 10, uh, purchase of two new Bixie stations. Councillor Bostock. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $97,966.13, including tax credits for the purchase of two new Bixie stations to award to Bixie Montreal the contract for this purpose for a maximum amount of $107,285.68, including taxes, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1041. Uh, thank you, and I'm sure Councillor Breschke would like to second that. Um, any further comments on this? The two Bixie stations, we had talked about this in the past. Um, okay. We have the highest ridership, I think, uh, in, in Montreal. So this is gonna be great. Uh, there'll be more Bixie bikes available for residents. Good news, good news. Um, all in favor? Carried. Uh, item number 11, appel d'offres publics, l'achat des mobiliers urbains. Um, this is item, uh, is Councillor, Listed as Breschke, but is that uh, is Councillor Lalonde, right. isn't it? Oh, is it? Uh, okay. It's waste. 
Oh, yes. OK, yes. It's... Sorry. Councillor Breschke. Alors, je propose d'autoriser une dépense de 135 368 et 78 sous, incluant le crédit de taxes pour l'achat de mobilier ur urbain, appel d'offres numéro PUB-2020-041, d'accorder à Equiparc, manufacturier d'équipements de Parc Inc., le contrat à cette fin au prix de sa soumission, soit pour une somme maximale de 148 246,47 sous, taxes incluses, le tout conformément aux documents contractuels de l'appel d'offres PUB 2020-041. D'imputer cette dépense conformément aux informations financières inscrites au sommaire décisionnel numéro 2020-1042. Merci beaucoup. Puis, est-ce que j'ai un appuyant pour ça? Councillor Chami, um, est-ce que vous avez d'autres commentaires sur ça, Mme Bresky? Uh, oui. So, uh, this is the purchase of the waste bins for the city of Westmount. Um, and uh, we've received two tenders, uh, but, uh, well, and uh, we, they were evaluated according to a grid of evaluation. And so Equi Park came out with 94% and the second uh, bidder came at 72.5%. So we went with Equi Park. So these are long lasting 20 to 30 year bins uh, uh, pos with possibility of repair um, and follow up, you know, possibility of follow up contract uh, for repair and they will be looking great with the compost slash, you know, recycling slash waste uh, separators, uh, some with two, some with three. Uh, so we're looking forward to having them start, start installing them in our cities sometime in October. Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Uh, item number 12. Um, I is Councillor Bostock, call for tenders by invitation, restoration of the wall and stairs in Devon Park. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $48,293.20, including tax credits, for the restoration of the wall and stairs in Devon Park, tender by invitation number INV 2020-038, to award to EXO Construction Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $52,887 and 35 cents, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents of the call for tenders by invitation INB 2020-038. To allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2020-1037. Uh, uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder on that? Councillor Lullum? Uh, any further comments? I know you had discussed it further Did, uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Do you have any further comments on this for Devon this Park? Is a, this is a two-part uh, restoration. Uh, so they will be looking at a, a more permanent restoration uh, later on. Um, but in the meantime, we needed to make sure that the, uh, the space was accessible to the community. So we're getting this done as soon as, as quickly as possible, efficiently and uh, with future plans for the park. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Um, the next item is Councillor Lullum. Notice of motion bylaw 1552 to recognize the good house as a heritage immovable. Thank you, Mayor Smith. I'm to give notice of the intention to submit for adoption at a subsequent meeting of council bylaw number 1552 entitled bylaw to recognize the good house as a heritage immovable. The object of this bylaw is to undertake the recognition of the immovable, a two-story residence built in stone on a property of 1996.1 square meters located at 178 Côte Saint Antoine Road on lot number 1583306 of the Quebec Cadastre as a heritage building in accordance with the powers conferred on the city under the Cultural Heritage Act, CQLR chapter P9002.9. The above mentioned immovable is recognized for the following reasons. One, for its heritage value, its historical value. A, as it was built between 1840 and 1844. B, as one of the oldest houses in Westmount. C, as the house 
is located on Côte Saint Antoine Road, a key artery in the development and history of the city of Westmount and Montreal. D, as it had an influence on the development of the sector. Two, for its architectural value. A, as it represents a rare example of Greek revival architecture in Quebec. B, as it includes one of the four residents that made up the Metcalf Terrace at the time in 2020, only two remain. C, as it has not undergone, undergone any significant changes since its construction. D, for the integrity of its stone construction and its materials. E, for the integrity of its interior, its interior design, materials and finishes. And F, as it was built by a renowned architect. Number three, for its landscape value. A, for its English garden characteristic of that era. B for the integrity. Uh, B for the integrity of its landscaping, including fences, fencing, divisions of spaces, etc. C for the stewardship and dedication of the good family, uh, as the stewardship and the dedication of the good family has ensured the continuity, continuity of an exceptional landscape for several generations. D for its garden containing a, of special interest such as Trillium and Ginkgo Biblio, Bibloba. E, as the property serves as a landmark. Four, for its emblematic value, as one of the oldest houses in the city. A, B, as one of the first testi testimonials of urban planning. C, as its presence is part of the city's collective memory due to its architecture and environment. A draft copy of the bylaw will be tabled and will be available for public consultation at a future council sitting. And I'd like to add to that that um, ce processus de citation municipale pour un antérieur, c'est la première instance pour une propriété privée au Québec. So we will, Westmount will be the first city to cite the interior of a building in Quebec. And we're quite proud of that. It reflects Westmount's um, uh, heritage over the years and how we've protected our patrimoine and our um, through um, having the first architectural commission in Canada that was established in 1916. We were awarded, the city was awarded the um, Prince of Wales Award in 2018 uh, for their leadership in conservation and the um, um, we were also cited by the Parks, uh, Parks Canada in 2011. We became a lieu historique national, a national uh, site, again, for our heritage preservation. So I think in following all those good examples, here is another, will be the first city to cite an interior. And this house is extremely unique and we're very fortunate to now have the powers to do this. Thank you very much. So we will, uh, uh, this is, you're giving notice of motion, so we will obviously hear more on this. So there is no vote required. Um, item number 15, the city clerk adoption bylaw 1558 to amend bylaw 1447 on periodic occupancy of the public domain. Thank you. I'd like to report that all formalities required for dispensing with the reading of this bylaw have been observed and that copies of the bylaw have been remitted to all members of council and are available for public reference. The object of this bylaw is to further define the conditions on which an application for a certificate of periodic occupancy of the public domain may be granted, establishing permitted configurations that allow for social distancing measures to be respected. The modif modifications uh, were made to section two of the draft bylaw for clarification purposes. Thank you. Est-ce que je peux avoir la déclaration de la part de chaque membre du conseil uh, présent à la fait qu'il ou elle a lu le règlement et que la lecture en est dispensée? And so declared. So declared. So Merci beaucoup, Councillor Lalam. I move that bylaw 1558 entitled bylaw on the periodic occupancy of the public domain be adopted. Okay. 
can't hear. Yeah, the, the mayor is on mute. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, apologies. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lullum. Uh, <laughs> a seconder on that, I am assuming, would be Councillor Peart. I'm sure would like to second that. Um, all in favor? Carried. Uh, I declare that bylaw number 1559 entitled bylaw to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 cafe terraces having been duly adopted. It is ordered that notices be given as required by law. So now uh, thank you to all those who made that uh, those changes happen. And now I encourage all of West Mount residences to go and support our local restaurants and our merchants, but our restaurants as well and enjoy these cafe terraces. Um, all the while social distancing. So thank you for that. Um, again, the city clerk, item number 16, adoption bylaw 1560 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year summer camp. Um, the, uh, this is item number 15, uh, I believe still uh, adoption bylaw 1559. Um, to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 at Cafe Terraces. Uh, all the formalities required for dispensing with the reading of this bylaw have been observed and copies of the bylaw have been remitted to all members of council and are available for public reference. Uh, the object of this bylaw is to broaden the locations within the public domain where Cafe Terraces may be installed as well as to clarify the language of an existing provision on the subject. Okay, thank you. So I don't think I have the most up-to-date on that one. Uh, do we need a further vote on that? A declaration. The de as, can we have the declaration that each member of council has read the bylaw and therefore um, reading is waived thereof? So declared. declared. So declared. declared. Uh, and now we need it. I move. You move, Councillor Wellam. I move that bylaw number 1559 entitled bylaw to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 Kathy Terraces be adopted. Thank you. A seconder is Councillor Peart, I'm sure. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Carried. I declare that bylaw 1559 entitled bylaw uh, to further amend zoning bylaw 1303 Kathy Terraces has been duly adopted as ordered that notices be given as required by law. We finished with that motion now, number 15. Okay, now we move to item 16, again, the city clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is for the adoption of bylaw 1560 to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year summer camps. Uh, I would like to report that the for all formalities required for dispensing with the reading of this bylaw have been observed and that copies of the bylaw have been remitted to all members of council and are available for public reference. The object of this bylaw is to adjust the fees for summer camps in order to meet the residents' needs in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Est-ce que je peux avoir la déclaration de la part de chaque membre du conseil présent à la fin qu'il ou elle a lu le règlement et que la lecture en est dispensée? Council declared. So declared. declared. Councillor Gallery, over to you. I move that bylaw number 1560 entitled bylaw to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year summer camps be adopted. Thank you. And a seconder on this, Councillor Shami, all in favor? Carried. I declare that bylaw 1560 entitled bylaw to further amend bylaw 1544 to establish tariffs for the 2020 fiscal year summer camps Having been duly adopted, it is ordered that notices be given as required by law. I should have asked you, Councillor Gallery, if you had any further comments on this. Um, you're on mute. We talked about it last month. Um, yeah. It's a okay. modification to the rate due to the extra COVID costs. Thank you. Um, item number 17, rent reduction cafe in the Westmount Recreation Center. Uh, Councillor Gallery again. I move that the rent for 9314-0408 Quebec Inc, otherwise known as Mouton Noir, for the operation of a cafe in the Westmount Recre Recreation Center be reduced to $62.50 per month for the months of April, May, and June 2020. That the city clerk be authorized to sign the necessary documents to give effect to this resolution. 
Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Lullum, uh, any further comments on this? Uh, it's our way uh, to acknowledge the difficult times Mouton Noir has had with the closed rec recreation center, which will slowly be reopening next week. Um, so we hope when it does reopen, all our residents and non-residents alike will head back there for a great meal and coffee. So. Thank you. Yeah. And while all restaurants had uh, certainly a challenging time or, and continue during this time, uh, Mouton Noir is actually housed within a building that was shut. So it was uh, even that much more challenging for them. But I encourage everyone to go back. Their food is delicious and they are open and they have it very set up uh, in terms of being able to socially distance and you go in one door and out the other, but it's all very well marked. So all in favor on that, I think we already had the vote on that carried. Um, final item is that of urban planning, Councillor Peart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that according to the recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at its meetings held on June 15th, 16th, 29th and 30th of 2020, the building permit applications appearing on the attached list reviewed under bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs be approved. Thank you. A seconder would be Councillor Lullum. Uh, any major items here or updates? We have one major, uh, I mean, the bulk of it, it's actually quite a, we've had a bit of an onslaught of uh, smaller projects. Uh, so I think we are getting back to our usual pace of processing. But um, the large majority of these files are smaller consent files, and there is one major landscaping file. But other than that, um, things are moving quite well. You've been playing department, at least Thank from where I sit. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. Uh, and that is the end of the items for uh, on tonight's agenda. Uh, Metro Brownstein, have there been any further questions throughout the council meeting? I'm checking and uh, just we'll give them uh, the 30 seconds lag here. And in the interim, just to confirm, who was the seconder on that last item for the permits? Uh, uh, Councilor Lallum. Thank you very much. And uh, now having caught up with real time uh, and there was an invitation on our part for any questions, but I do not see any others beyond those that we received through our online system throughout the day. So uh, there, there are no questions for our second question period. Thank you. Uh, and on that note, uh, good night, everyone. And we will um, be back mid-month.